Hello, welcome to Verbling. <laughs> hi. Uh, okay, hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. For the next hour, I have a, I don't know, series, I guess, which I intermittently conduct here at Verbling, where I talk about United States states, of course. I'm sure, well, maybe you don't know. How many states are there? Hmm, okay, well, there's at least three. No, kidding. There are 50 states in the United States at this time. Today, we are going to talk about the land of enchantment. Oh, boy. Uh, which is New Mexico. So, uh, join me and we'll talk about it. What do you know about New Mexico? What have you heard? What do you think about it? And, uh... We'll see if we can learn a little bit about this enchanting place. Uh, let me welcome students to the class. Hello, Anton. How are you? Hello, teacher. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good afternoon to you. <laughs> good mm -hmm. afternoon to me. Okay. Hey, Anton. <laughs> welcome to the class. Uh, hello, Daniel. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Also, good afternoon. <laughs> I'm close, Ton. Anton. Yeah. You're close to Anton. I know. Even yes. in the Verblank class, you're right next to each other. I'm in Salamanca. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good morning to you, gentlemen. Uh, good morning, Heidi. Or good afternoon, Heidi. It's Hello. afternoon where you are. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. How's, Heidi, how's the weather where you are? Pardon? How is the weather? No, it's spring, just spring, but it's getting uh, hotter. Oh, because it's really hot here today. Oh. Mm, this is around 25 degrees Celsius. Ah, okay. I'm not sure Celsius what it is, but it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit here. Really? Yeah, well, what's that, in 38 fact, maybe? In fact, they use uh, Celsius. Yeah, I know. I think it's 38. Uh, I just happened to see Fahrenheit, what it was. A hundred. I think that's like 38, so it's getting up there. Here. Uh, hello, Luo. Uh, hello. Good afternoon for both of us. And I think if <laughs> your temperature is 38, you should uh, neck to your uh, upper body and uh, just show your head. <laughs> no, we don't, so we don't see your body. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, trust me. You you can't see the fact that I'm wearing shorts and I'm not wearing shoes. <laughs> I'm put my feet in cold water while I teach class. I, I do have the air conditioner, which is literally I can reach my arm over and touch it, blowing wow, directly wow. on me. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's the only way. Uh, welcome to the class and hello, Michael. How are you today? Hello, doing well. How are you? Good. I'm good. Uh, I'm a, I'm a little sore though. I went hiking this weekend. You you guys haven't seen me in a couple days. That's because I was off in the jungle. Da -da -da -da. Hiking mountaintops in the jungle in the hot weather. What's wrong with me? I don't know, but I am sore. My body is just beat up. But it was great. It was great. It's nice to be back with you all. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about New Mexico. All right, the land of enchantment. Um, Anton, what the heck is enchantment? Do you know? No, I don't understand. Enchantment? Yeah, it's a hard word. Uh, oh, the chat's not working. Great. Charmin. Charming, yeah, okay, uh, very much related, actually. Oh, looks like verbaling chat is not working for me, gentlemen. So, uh, everyone, I'm gonna switch over to. I'm gonna switch over to uh, to the Google Hangouts chat, just so everyone knows. Charming, yes, enchanted. Okay, where else do we see this word? Enchanted forest. 
Ooh. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. Ah, okay. I know. All right. What's the enchanted forest, Anton? Uh, it's like uh, I can read some about some tales, and ah. uh, it's, uh, you can find some strange uh, characters, or indeed, uh, yes. Might be magical or enchanted. So the yeah. land of enchantment, okay, is mm-hmm. it implies that it's somewhat magical, mystical. Mm-hmm. And actually, I I actually think for New Mexico, this is a very fitting motto, a state motto. This is on their license plates, land of enchantment. They have really nice license plates on their cars in New Mexico. They're really cool. Uh, uh, Okay. Um, Daniel, what do you know about New Mexico? Do you know anything about New Mexico? Yes. In the border between USA and Mexico. (laughs) Good guess. Good guess. Yeah. It's a hot land. No? It's a desert. Mostly desert, yes. Desert. Uh, many, many Mexica, Mexican people living there. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe they speak Spanish a lot. I don't know. Yeah, there are many Spanish speakers there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely true. Uh, uh, no sé, uh, problems between narcos y FBI. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Okay. Probably <laughs> all along the southern border with Mexico uh, and the United States. Yeah. Um, the really good food, maybe? Mexican What's that? food? Mexican, Mexican food? food? Ah, yeah. They eat a lot of Mexican food there. Sure. Definitely. That's yeah, true. I don't know because it's an uh, enchanted land. I don't it's, know. It, it is enchanted. We're going to talk about that some more. Okay, let me ask Heidi. Heidi, what do you know about New Mexico? There are several mafia groups smuggling drugs. There are? They are very rich and they have army. So they do? before uh, American uh, army attacks that group. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. Uh, I, I, I know what Daniel says. Of course, there are smuggling humans, hum- people sneaking through the border, and there are, are drugs uh, coming through the border. But all the all across the border from Mexico to yeah. the United States. Texas, to, New Mexico. Want to immigrate to America? Yeah. There are many irregular immigrants uh, come to. Yeah, that's true. America. But it, in actuality, there's a lot more in Texas and in California and Arizona because mm-hmm. New I Mexico. Don't... New Mexico is very desert-like. Actually, Daniel was correct. It's very hard to get somewhere, so. It's uh, actually New Mexico is one of the least populous states. I believe it's number 45. There's very few people, and the desert-like areas in the border area between United States and Mexico, it's desert. There's nobody there and nothing there. So I think more immigrants, illegal immigrants, come across the border in Texas and California than than New Mexico. Arizona. Yeah, and Arizona as well. Big problem there. But yes, there are some, definitely. Okay. Uh, Luo, what do you know about New Mexico? Uh, actually, I've just uh, finished to watch the Breaking Bad. So the, the, <laughs> it took place in um, New Mexico, so I have not, uh, not about New Mexico. As uh, Heidi said, there are, there are lots of remote areas, so very easy to hide some some criminals to for for making drugs or, or cook in the film 
Um, okay. They make yeah. some mess mess means if I can remember exactly. And uh -huh. uh, oh, oh, okay, and uh, yeah, lots of uh, gunshots. Mm, gunshots. Because, yeah, because no no one goes there, so it's easy to commit crime. Crime. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think the drug. They're talking about meth labs. Here's a big long word for you: chemical methamphetamine. Oh um, yes, yes, you said no word. Um, yeah. So in, in the t TV shows, they just uh, usually call it mess <laughs> meth. or crystal, crystal or crystal or, or yeah. crystal meth. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, you know, yeah, we're learning okay. English, so we might as well learn the real word. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. meth labs. Yeah, okay. I guess that's true. It's very. This is, okay, this is interesting. This is educational for me. You guys are talking about crime and meth labs and smuggling immigrants. Uh, I've been to New Mexico, and that's the last thing I would think about. It's a very beautiful, sort of surreal, magical place. The last thing I think about is criminals and guns and drugs. But, <laughs> okay. <laughs> interesting. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, Daniel. the The TV show shows a lot of the the natural areas of New Mexico. I've yes. heard about it a lot, but I have never seen the TV series. Actually, I've only heard about it. Okay. All right, uh, Michael. Uh, what do you know about New Mexico? Anything? If anything. Well, honestly, I don't know too much about uh, information. I just looked up at the map where it's located, so uh -huh. I didn't know the location uh, of the New Mexico, and uh, it's located like near Texas and uh, west of Texas. And uh, yeah, and uh, Arizona. Arizona. Yes. It's State. between Texas yeah. and Arizona, right? And uh, to the south is Mexico, the country, uh, Sonora, I think, and to the north is Colorado, and a, a little bit Oklahoma borders the northeast. But yeah, yes, that's correct. It is normally con considered a mountain state when people talk about. Sometimes it's considered a southwestern state. Sometimes it's considered a mountain state. If you're talking time zones, it's in the mountain states because the Rocky Mountains, the main mountains through the through the western part of the United States, uh, come down into New Mexico, Santa Fe, that area. So it is a mountain state. The actually, though a lot of it's desert, the northern part of the state has many mountains, and forests. Uh, Beautiful country. Uh, Anton, can you add anything? Do you, is there anything you can add about New Mexico that you uh, know? No, especially because this is a new place for me to, to know. Uh -huh. And I'm listening uh, and okay. quiet, uh, only listen to uh -huh. understand and new, uh, uh, know new things about New Mexico. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, let's let me see if I can. Uh, first of all, uh, let's see what I can uh, teach you about it. First of all, the largest city and the capital is. Look at that one. Okay, I just put it in the chat box. Go ahead and try to say this word. <laughs> uh, can you pronounce that? Albuquerque. Ah, Michael. You got it. Very good. Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Excellent. How did you know that? Did you know the name already? Nope. I just no. uh, I have a, like, uh, so you put a text and is reading the text. Mm. Software. Okay. In, uh, integrate in Google uh, Chrome. Yeah, even English speakers, if they didn't know this uh, word, would 
have a hard time figuring out how to pronounce it. But that is correct. Albuquerque, small, well, small city, half a million people. The capital, pretty much in the center, slightly west of New Mexico. What a weird city. Uh, fun. Very fun city, but very strange. Uh, just uh, some background. I have been to New Mexico. I traveled through it, I don't know, a few days. I spent three days in Albuquerque with some friends. And I traveled through it, and I saw some of, uh, uh, some of the uh, interesting points. I had a very strange time there, which is why I think magical, enchanted... <laughs> Yes, it felt like alternate reality or something. It was a very strange place, but interesting and beautiful and uh, very strange. Uh, you, you have these big me mesas. Do you know what a mesa is, uh, Daniel? Do you know what a Sorry? mesa? Do you know what a mesa is? M e s a. Mesa. Yeah. Table. Table from Spanish, right? That's why I asked you. Okay. So these big uh, rock outcroppings that just have an extremely flat top, they may go very high. They, they may go, you know, a thousand feet high, but then they're just flat, perfectly flat. And they're formed out of sandstone, and they've just eroded over the years. And so there's the beautiful mesas that are are pink and yellow and gold. Very, very pretty in the sunset. It's amazing. Uh, in part of the country. And then to, in the northern part of the country, there's Rocky Mountains, very high mountains with forests, uh, etc. Let me welcome Donato. Hi, Donato. Hi, Oakley. How are you? Good. Uh, how have you been? Long time no see. Yeah, I've been uh, in South Beach. South Beach? Yeah. Which South Beach? <laughs> Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's South Miami. Okay. That's the famous one. All right. You've been in South Beach. Cool. How was South Beach? Yeah. I went for uh, studying English okay. and realized that everybody speaks Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Very much related. We're talking about New Mexico today, but uh, yeah, okay. You have a very good point. If you're in the southern part of the United States, all the way really from Florida, where you have many Cubans, okay, uh, and really uh, all the way across, especially from Louisiana, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. You're gonna you're gonna meet lots of Spanish speakers, absolutely, and even uh, Americans, first language English speakers, learn Spanish as second language through yeah. most of the United States, I would say, actually, uh, all of the United States, except for where I grew up, because I grew up in New England, which is close to Quebec, which is French speaking, so. In my area of the country, people learn French, second language, commonly. Okay, so <laughs> South Beach, learning English but speaking Spanish. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can speak Spanish. It was bad for me because I, I, I would have preferred not to answer, no? I to say I don't <laughs> understand, but I understood perfectly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I couldn't miss the opportunity to socialize with people just because I need the English. I need it. Okay. That's why I was talking sometimes in English, sometimes in Spanish. All right. Yeah, oh, that's that totally makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, okay, fun. South Beach, nice. Well, well, um, That's great. Well, it's great to see you again. It's been a while. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Heidi, <coughs> I have a question for you, Heidi. Uh, 
Most of New Mexico would, would be described as arid. Not all. the nor Again, the northern mountains, not as much, but it's an arid climate. Okay? It's desert-like. Heidi, have you ever been to a desert? Yeah. Tunisia. Tunisia. Oh. Really? You never told me that you went to Tunisia. <laughs> I did that. Uh, yeah, okay. That's definitely a desert. Uh... Sahara, right? Yeah, Sahara. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Do you like the desert? Yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> All right. If you like the desert, okay. Uh, New Mexico has some very beautiful natural areas. So let me. One of them is called White Sands. It's uh. It's actually strange. It's very barren. There's, there's nobody really around. I drove through a corner of it. I, I went near it. But uh, it's very, very desolate. So you, when you're talking about criminals and so forth, I suppose you could be right. Before I saw the movie in Six and the City, they went to Mexico, some resort place. White sand and a very blue, beautiful blue sky and blue sea. Do you know? Uh, Have you ever seen? What? Sex in the City? Yes, the first movie. I, I thought they went somewhere to the Gulf, uh, like uh, some Arabian country or something. Uh, in the Gulf second, The second. First movie, they went to Mexico. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. But I have to tell you, when we're talking New Mexico, you're nowhere near the sea. <laughs> in fact, in fact, New Mexico is the has the least water of any American state. There's really not much water there at all. Uh, New Mexico and Nevada both are very, very dry. You, uh, although New Mexico does have a number of important rivers, uh, um, the Rio Grande, which is famous in songs and movies and books. It's a very famous river. It's in a lot of American songs, actually. But it's not very that big a river, quite honestly. Uh, okay, it's, it's very desolate. Uh, one th Another thing that I did there it, when I went through, I went to Carlsbad Caverns, which I highly recommend. It's in the middle of nowhere. You're going to have to drive forever. Remember, in America, it's very big. So sometimes tourist destinations, you have to drive forever to get to. Uh, this place, Carlsbad Caverns, was impressive. Uh, Luo, have, yeah. have you ever been to... Uh, have you ever been spelunkering? Spelunkering? Sorry, I don't know. What is spelunkering? Ah, okay. Here is a very weird English word. It is a verb. To spelunker. Spelunker. Uh, I don't think I have been to <laughs> spelunkering, but I, I have been to some caves. Well, there you go. You were spelunkering. To explore caves is to spelunker. Very odd yeah. word. Yeah, it's a yeah. verb. Mm -hmm. Means exploring caves. Where, where were you exploring caves, Luo? Um, I have been to Laos and Thailand. Also, um, some places in China. They, yes, mm -hmm. they have some caves. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not a spelunker. <laughs> I'm just uh, go there for just to uh, stand there and uh, experience something and. Uh, a leave. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, okay, yeah, you're you're kind of right. As a tourist, all right, they hold your hand and they let you explore the cave. But a, a real spelunkerer would actually have the light on their helmet and wear a helmet and have ropes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Explore the cave, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh Carlsbad Caverns, by the way, um, 
it's really in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a desert. But uh, you get there, and uh, by the way, you should probably be. I camped near there. There's places to camp. I couldn't find it. I don't think there's any hotels. <laughs> it's, it's really in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, you you get to this cavern. These caverns go down. You go. You take the tour. You go down. Down, 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 down for a mile. You get mm -hmm. on elevation one mile, which is uh, 1.6 kilometers down into the earth. So, so is there some uh, tourist agency to uh, do this business to uh, take you go to the Casbarn Caves, Caverns? Uh huh. Yes. Is there some uh, tourist agency? Sure, they take you. Uh, you have a tour guide, and he takes you down. And there's steps or, or whatever. Wow. But there's many, 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 many different caves and things to see as you go down. It takes hours, but you go down for a, a 1.6 kilometers, so it's it's a long way down. It's very strange because when you get to the bottom, there's like a cafeteria, and they have cheeseburgers and pizza. <laughs> there's different food you wow. can get. So you get lunch. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and you're you're a mile down in the under the ground. So it's a, a little strange. It's very strange. You go they they have like McDonald's, and you're sitting in McDonald's, and there's like stalactites and stalagmites around you. Very weird thing. But uh, it's very uh, attractive. I think. Yeah, it's neat. Uh. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's really cool. But then they, fortunately, they have an elevator to get you back to the surface. They have big elevators, so you don't have to hike back up for one mile. Well, so how, you, much, how much? How much you cost down. you for this for this trip? I actually don't really remember. Uh, I don't remember. I I don't recall. It seems like that it was quite cheap, actually. Uh, I don't think it cost very much at all. And the cool thing is, all right, maybe maybe you wouldn't think this is cool. I don't know, but at sunset, you you get to the top. It really takes almost all day. I remember I got there at ten in the morning. I had lunch, uh, a late lunch. By the time I ate lunch, it was three or four in the afternoon. It took a long time. Anyway, uh, you get to the top and they have a, a little, they have seats, uh, like uh, a, a small stadium arranged around the cave mouth. The cave mouth is quite large. And uh, as the sun sets, bats come out of the cave and, and they swirl in a huge cloud and they come out continuously millions and millions of bats. <laughs> it looks like a big cloud coming out of the cave. And you sit right near the cave, so they're going up right next to you. It's it's really amazing. There's so <laughs> many of them. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah, and you can hear, there's so many, you can hear them <laughs> flying up out of the ground. It was really quite cool. One of the most amazing things I have ever seen. And you can watch the sunset behind them. It's just really kind of cool. So, so there, there is a tropical weather or not? It's not tropical. It's arid. It's very desert-like. Plenty warm. Oh, I went okay. there in the spring. I was there in uh, May, I think. Early May. Oh, about this time of year. About... About now, actually. Uh, yeah, just about this time of year. It, it was nice. Pleasant weather. Not too hot yet. Um, but it was really cool watching the bats come out. It was excellent. Uh, Michael, question. Pop quiz. Michael? More English learning. What yeah. is the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite? Do you have any idea what they are? 
stalactites and stalagmites. What are they, first of all? So it's uh, something related to caves? Yes, indeed. Yeah, so first one, stalactite uh, is uh, formed uh, of calcium, say it's deposited by dripping water. That's right, calcium, limestone, lime. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same in stalagmite. Yes, they are. What is the difference? Okay, if you go into a cave, uh, calcium deposits, as the water slowly drips down, it leaves behind calcium deposits, or sometimes limestone, and sometimes mixes of other uh, organic chemicals, or, or minerals, rather. Minerals, actually. So sometimes they're green, yellow, orange, pink. If you uh, are in a cave, they actually are often different colors, sometimes very white. Um, so it's kind of cool. Stalactites and stalagmites. One of them are the ones that come down from the top. All right, you've, you've seen probably seen pictures. And one is the one that comes up from the bottom. Sometimes they meet and form pillars. Okay. Sometimes they haven't met yet, so you have one sort of cone, long cone, going down, and a cone that meets it going up. Here, here's how you remember the difference. Stalactites with a T, top, T, top. Stalactites. Stalagmites with a G, G, ground. So stalactites are the ones on the top, and stalagmites are the ones that come up from the ground. There you go. That is a little mnemonic device to help you remember the difference, which one goes which way. There you go. Hopefully <laughs> you learned a little English. Uh, Michael, have you ever been in a cave? Have you ever gone uh, exploring or as a tourist into a cave? No, unfortunately. Oh, well, no, I've been, I've been, I've been. Uh, when I was a child, I've been um, with a bus. With uh, So when I was studying in, uh, I think, school and high school, we, we've been, uh, I I was like in a bus and uh, with other children. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't remember too much about that information. Okay. Uh, nothing uh, like unusual, nothing, uh, something interesting, uh, because I uh, couldn't recall. When you ask, I couldn't recall, right. but after that. Right. Uh, so nothing, something excited. Uh, okay. Kind of a cave, and they're like, uh, uh, no. Well, for you it's cold. and... It's cold. Yes, it is yeah. cold. It's very cold. Wear a jacket if you go into a cave. Even, <laughs> a, even a cave in the desert is cold, definitely. Uh, definitely true and good advice. Yes, you would not forget Carlsbad Caverns. They are really enormous, intricate, huge, beautiful, giant openings way underground in the earth. Uh, just amazing. There's an area I remember called the Cathedral, and it kind of looks like a giant church. Uh, there's like a the organ, there's uh, the pulpit, there's it's really kind of cool. Uh, okay, uh, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen anywhere, which I saw in New Mexico. Uh, small story, as I was driving to, actually I was getting ready, I was going to camp out the night before and go to the cave in the morning. So I was driving to my campsite, I was driving across the desert, and suddenly I'm driving along in my car. No other cars. You can't see any other cars or houses or anything. You're just all alone out there. And I'm driving along and all of a sudden, thump, 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 thump. What is that? What is going on? I'm, I, it seems like a flat desert road and every once in a while, thump, 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 my car kind of bumps up in the air. Well... I went to look at, I stopped the car and tried to figure out what was going on. And this, what was happening, there were jackrabbits, very 
large rabbits. Bigger than the ones you see in the pet store, okay? Very large rabbits, jackrabbits. And there were thousands of them <laughs> everywhere. There were so many of them, and they were crossing the road that it was impossible to miss them. I was running over them. <laughs> it was sick. It was not right. Uh, Anton, have you ever run over an animal with your car? Yes, sometimes. Oh uh, my gosh. Yes, uh, we live in a, a typical place in which you can find some species of animals, but some of them are little than this that you are describing. Yeah. Uh, maybe some little uh, rabbits or rats, or okay. country rats, or maybe some, I don't know, they were the. Uh, I'm going to put in Google. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Smaller than okay. They instead of littler, they are smaller. Porcupine. Than, some porcupine. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. You can find some of them in this country and in this region. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have a lot of problems if you find a, a cow or some <laughs> animal, so bigger animal. Uh, uh, Biggest animal, a bigger animal, or, or, and you can find some of them because we we have we have a lot of a lot of farms, or um, mm -hmm. you can find some uh, uh, animals in nature, and you can find some deers and and big animals. Then you can they can. Uh, destroy your car and yeah and right. and you you can have a a, a big accident if you uh, crash with them yes you can definitely and by the way if you're traveling in north america canada or united states be aware that there are a lot of animals just like anton describes and you really have to pay attention to what you're doing when you're driving because it is actually fairly common to hit animals unless you're actually paying attention exactly uh, as Anton describes deer and deer can really wreck your car um, however deer uh, Anton let me just remind you that deer in English is uncountable so one deer 27 deer we don't use s there's no plural for deer mm. don't ask that's me why that's weird one that's it weird is, one it is weird I, I you agree. can count one deer two, two deer three deer that's right one cow two cows one yeah. horse two horses oh. but one deer two deer i never uh, find this rule i know this I know, is it's the first weird. time i find this rule okay. well, you need to weird. write to your president and please don't have rules <laughs> <laughs> it's English, you know, it's crazy. It's Actually, there's a, another, here's another animal that exists in New Mexico. They also have pronghorn antelope. Same thing, one antelope, two antelope, three antelope. I, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, actually... Actually, with a lot of, uh, I guess, antlered... Ant those horns on their top are called an antler. For some reason in English, a lot of animals with antlers, when I think about it, the same thing for elk, which are very big deer. Oh, not elf. Whoops, that was a mistake. <laughs> not elf. Wild American <laughs> elves. No, uh, I meant elk. Uh, wrong, wrong, uh, <laughs> wrong letter. Elk. One elk, two elk, three elk. We do the same thing. I don't know why, but there you have it. Uh, anyway, okay. Have you have you ever have you Anton ever personally hit an animal with your car? Uh, yes, one time I hit a, a medium-sized dog, and it a was dog. oh, that's it. Was very dangerous because he broke. Uh, the left light of the car and, and some of the of the of the wheel was damaged. Uh, 
uh -huh. and it, it, it was a, a real uh, uh, it was lucky because we don't have a, a, a big accident but it was very difficult to uh, manage the, the car in this situation yeah right. did the dog survive? not not uh, oh. we hit the, his head and it, it was better for, for him I suppose yeah it went quickly. Yeah, I once hit a dog on Christmas Day. Oh my God. Can you imagine? I hit a dog on Christmas Day. I had to go to the family and knock on the door. I'm terribly sorry. I hit your dog. The dog ran away into the forest. I believe he lived. On your motorbike? No, no, no. On my car in the United <laughs> States. Oh, okay. Here you have like an electrical motorbike. Electric. Yeah. Right. If I hit him, hit him with my bike here, I would incur more damage. <laughs> you, die. you would die. <laughs> no. Uh, no, this was the United States, and I was very sad because I had to inform the owners of the dog that I had hit their dog. And it was Christmas Day, of all days, you know. And I could see there were toys, a swing set in the yard. I could see there were children. Oh no! And how did you say? What is the proper way? I to... was extremely contrite. I was contrite and polite. I kept my eyes downward, and I, I'm really sorry. Uh, you know, he came out of nowhere. He jumped in front of me. I wasn't going that fast, and he ran away. So I hope he's okay. He bounced off the car and ran into the forest. Uh, but you, you know what? They didn't die without pain. But these, uh, this is America, so these people are like, ah, don't worry about it. That stupid dog. <laughs> they totally didn't. They didn't even care. They said, hey, you want a cup of coffee? You want a donut? My wife just made some donuts. They gave me a donut they, and coffee. It was crazy. Poison donut and poison, poison donut. <laughs> yeah, I'm, they didn't even care. They were totally nice about it. So anyway, different story when I was in New Mexico. And I was hitting all these rabbits, so I, I did in fact take some time to learn about the animals in New Mexico. And my goodness, there are tons of them, uh, lots of them. Everything that we have in America is in, in uh, New Mexico, basically, sort of in the middle of the country. So everything is there. <laughs> uh, all the deers, badgers, porcupines, rabbits, bears every kind of possible animal because it's the climate is varied desert to mountains and it's everything so remote so lots of yes, animals I, there but yeah. the worst thing in these cases must be that uh, you can find a, a, a stray animal without owner and if you hit it uh, your insur insurance is not going to recover your money ah, because you there true. is no responsible of the animal. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Does that ha okay? Yeah, same thing in the United States too. If you hit an animal and then you get damaged, you your insurance rate goes up or your insurance depends on your insurance whether they even pay for it or not. Mm -hmm. but, right, depends what you have, but yeah. Anyway, I didn't really incur any damage running over the rabbits. <laughs> but it was very uncomfortable, you know, driving along. Oh, like there's another one. Jeez. Not comfortable. Not a comfortable ride. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, got to run over some animals, go camping, go to the caves. Uh, then I went to Albuquerque, which is a very beautiful city. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, it's near R the Rio Grande River, in fact, which is sort of what they what is considered in America to be crossing from uh, from the east to the west. Uh, in any case, very strange city. That I went to uh, museums. For some odd reason, no one charged me to go to museums in Albuquerque. The thing that nobody mentioned about New Mexico, which one thing New Mexico is very famous for, 
Native American Indians. So there are lots of historical places or, or museums that have to do with Native American Indians. Uh, Daniel, do you know anything about Native American Indians? About? Native American Indians, the Americans who were there before the Europeans came. Uh, the, mm, the first man in the living in New Mexico. Yes, mm. right. Which New Mexico was actually home to some very ancient Native American Indians, and even now today, uh, Native Americans are a huge part of the population. Have you ever met a Native American, Daniel? Ever? Uh, no. I only know what the Indian people have all the casinos <laughs> in have USA. All the casinos. <laughs> oh yeah. In TV series always the casino in a in a free in a free place. Okay, for... right. <laughs> because actually you know, it's funny, but it's a it's a stereotype, but often true because uh, the Indian territories they were given by the United States government eventually crushed them into a small area. But they have sovereign rights. So even though, for example, in New Mexico, uh, it may be gambling may be illegal. However, the native uh, on their reservation their area, they have sovereign rights, so if they want to build a casino, if they want to make gambling legal, they can. Um, although uh, Indian reservations have to follow federal law, they do not, they can make up their own state laws. They do not have to follow state laws. They are a sovereign state. Mm -hmm. So federal laws, you can't go around murdering people, all right? You, you can't make methamphetamines. That's against the federal laws. All right. But gambling is not. Gambling is legal in Nevada. Gambling is a state law. Gambling is legal in New Jersey in a certain area. So things like that, they can make up their own laws. All right. Things like, oh, I don't know, DWI, uh, driving while intoxicated, Sometimes they have different rules on an Indian reservation because that's a state law. So state mm -hmm. laws, it's kind of tricky because you may be driving through an Indian reservation in New Mexico, of which there are many, by the way. You may be actually in an Indian reservation and not even realize it till maybe you drive through a very small town and you realize there are no white people, no black people, no Asians. Everyone is Native American. Hmm. Okay. And you, you stop and get a sandwich or something. And Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, you're on a reservation. Am I? Oh, oh neat. How did I get here? Uh, okay. So it's very interesting. So you have to be yes. aware of that. But you're right. They sometimes have casinos. I don't think they do in New Mexico. Or maybe they do, but I never saw it. I don't know. What I saw was dusty little towns <laughs> with dusty little restaurant, you know, dusty little bar, dusty little hotel. <laughs> very, kind of very poor. Uh, <clears throat> what yeah, kind of, of Indian people? Well, How? Apaches. Uh, <laughs> Apaches? Uh, I think so. You see, in ancient times, there were uh, part of the Aztec em Empire from Mexico, was in New Mexico. Uh, now, I think it's Navajo. Navajo. Navajo and Pueblo mm -hmm. Indians, mostly. Um, I think so. You know, one, one of the things they do is sell, like, handicrafts, like weaving blankets or jewelry, mm -hmm. things like that. You, you see places on the side of the road that sell these kinds of, I guess, um, sort of souvenirs, 
I suppose. Anyway, uh, right, so Albuquerque, there's lots of, all of New Mexico, there's lots of Indian, Native American Indian related things, and lots of, uh, lots of um, uh, museums in Albuquerque. They're very interested, they're in the middle of nowhere, so they seem overly interested in culture there. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. So there's lots of museums, there's like an opera hall, there's all of these types of things, there's a theater for plays, which is very strange because it's this city that's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, anyway, very interesting, slightly bizarre town. Very clean, very nice people. Uh, everywhere I went in Albuquerque, I was there for, I don't know, three, four days. Everywhere I went, nobody wanted to charge me for anything. Uh, I went to museums and no charge. I went, I went to, uh, I went and had dinner somewhere. I went to a bar to have a drink, and people were so friendly. They were buying me drinks. Somebody bought me dinner. It's very strange. I, I didn't pay for anything in Albuquerque. So I highly recommend it for those of you who like to go on vacation and spend no money at all. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. Very enchanted, magical, weird. I went to an amusement park in the middle of Albuquerque. They have a big amusement park. Roller coasters and rides. I don't know why. I don't know how. Uh, but I went into the amusement park and they said, oh, all the rides are free today. They gave me free hot dogs. <laughs> uh, I guess what I, what I figured out later is a corporation, a major company, had paid for the day for their employees. And somehow, just like I did in the museum, I just walked through the door and no one's paying any attention. So I just walked in and started going on the rides with other people. I was by myself. I had fun in Albuquerque, and I paid for nothing. Maybe Crazy. do they think that you are kind of a movie star, or I ha I don't know Kremlin. what they thought. It was the weirdest thing. It was like Rambo, but it was spooky but fun. Yeah, it was a very strange experience. I met an American Indian, and this may sound insane to you, but he was missing six fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but he, all he had was a thumb and one finger on each hand, so he just picked up things like this. It was a very weird experience. It was like some kind of a movie or something, but very odd. Uh, anyway, fun city. And you know what? I, people kept telling me, uh, oh, you should go to Santa Fe. If you think Albuquerque is unique and interesting, go to Santa Fe. It's even more unique and interesting. Frankly, that scared me. Santa Fe is an artist community. Many artists, many very hip and groovy kind of people living there. Uh, I never did make it there. I, I had to get going on my trip, but very interesting. So not only, okay, you guys bring up drug dealers and crazy immigrant, illegal immigrants. There are many artistic type people, people who want to paint the desert. The people there are very, very friendly, but a little weird, maybe. <laughs> Not scary, just like magical weird. I don't know how to say it. Very strange. Uh, in any case, uh, on my trip, I then I went north. I went. New Mexico is basically a big box, and I went diagonally, more or less, through the box, kind of like that, but more or less in a diagonal. So I went the long way across the state. So I saw a lot of it. Uh, eventually, I end up ended up in the Four Corners. Heidi, do you have any idea what the Four Corners are? Have you ever heard of that? This is a pretty famous place in the United States. I don't have any. Uh, I, I have, I have, um, because uh, in the Breaking Bad one one episode, it shows uh -huh. the four states uh, crossed there, 
and there is a um, something made uh, around the metal. Um, yes, uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Exactly. There's okay. Uh, it's actually kind of interesting. There's a, a brass round metal. That's exactly right. And there's a circle, and there's four states that meet. It's the only place in the United States where four states meet each other. So if you stand on the circle, you're literally standing in four states. You're in Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. They four right lines, uh, four four right angles rather. So. Yeah, and it's quite remote, actually, but it's really cool. Uh, I don't know what it is about it, but it's kind of awesome. Uh, yes, so I got to go there. I, you saw that in Breaking Bad. I actually stood on that brass plate. And um, in the United States, okay, those little round brass plates, all right, they are placed by the U.S. Geological Survey which well. is basically a branch of the army. Uh, so they place them in all important spots geologically. You see them, uh, for example, in the tallest mountain in each state. You will get to the very top, and there will be one of those brass circles. U.S. Geological Survey, it will say when they figured it out, what the elevation is, always. And... Um, yeah, it'll give important information. So when you travel in the United States, you look for these things, these little brass circles, uh, because they're the most, the best, the highest, the something superlative. <laughs> they're there to indicate some kind of superlative something. Uh, okay, uh, last thing. the As you pass... When you go through New Mexico, uh, one thing you will do is you will uh, undoubtedly pass the Continental Divide. How about that one? Heidi, do you know what that one is? The Continental Divide. Any idea? Or actually, we're out of time. Anybody? Uh, it's located on the border to South and North American continent. Uh, nice try, but you're going this way, and we sh should be going this way. <laughs> Almost. The Continental Divide goes through the Rocky Mountains from the north, from Canadian border, uh, all the way to Mexico, and it is the highest elevation point in the middle of the country. So it's the dividing line between east and west. So... Uh, from the Continental Divide, if you pour a glass of water or you go to the bathroom, okay, uh, half of it will go to the Pacific and half of it will go to the Atlantic. That's it. So it's the dividing line. In every, it's clearly marked everywhere. Anytime anyone's going east to west or west to east in the United States, you will definitely go, come across the Continental Divide. Always a good place to take a break because there's almost always some kind of tourist break area there. Anyway, uh, so much for New Mexico. Hopefully I pointed out a few interesting things. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank we you. didn't speak about the business in New Mexico. No, we did. Is there any kind but of, I, uh, any I can. Company? I can do that extremely quickly. Business in... in Industry in New Mexico. Business. Tourism <laughs> is one. And the second, <laughs> actually, United States military. There are quite a few. Oil is the other one. Thank you, Anton. Oil and gas is the fifth state for production. Fifth? Third? Fourth? It's up there as far as oil and gas production. And drug. And drugs. Okay, Heidi. And drugs. But that's the illegal economy. Fine, Heidi. Have your way. Okay, but also uh, American military. There are a number of military bases, famous testing grounds. Ah, ah, that's the other thing we didn't talk about. New Mexico has lots of testing areas for U.S. military. It's so 
you know, desolate and abandoned. But that's it. That's like their entire industry, those three things. American military, tourism, and oh, those four things. Military, tourism, uh, oil and gas, and, and drugs. <laughs> I think drugs. Okay, uh, all right. Okay. Uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you for joining the class, everyone. <coughs> thank we'll you. See you again soon. Bye, Bye for now. Bye-bye.